This viscast is going to examine a transverse wave travelling along a stretched spring. Pause the video and read through the question carefully. Now that you've read the question, you can see that you're being asked to find the speed of a wave that is travelling along a stretched spring. And you're given some information about the details of the spring and what's stretching it. So the spring has quite a few properties here. It has an unstretched length that's given. It has a spring constant that tells you how much force is required to stretch the spring. And we're told the mass of the spring. We're also told that there is a larger mass that's hanging from the spring and not moving. Let's begin with a diagram so we can understand what the physical situation is. We have a spring that's hanging vertically with some mass that I'll call capital M hanging from the spring. We know the spring will have an unstretched length L0 that is if the mass was not hanging on the spring it might be for example that long but the spring has been stretched of course because it now has a mass hanging vertically from it. And this spring also has a mass that I will call lowercase m here and has a spring constant k. A couple of relationships that might be important here might be the behaviour of the spring and for that we'll need to think of Hooke's law. Hooke's law tells us about how a spring will stretch. It tells us that the force is equal to the spring constant multiplied by the displacement from the unstretched length and remember the minus sign is telling us that force is in the opposite direction. So in our example here, if the spring has been stretched downwards, the spring is going to pull upwards with the force, so in the opposite direction. And another important relationship that might be useful in this problem here is that for a transverse wave travelling along a stretched string, or in this case a stretched spring, we know that the speed of that wave only depends upon two things, namely the tension force divided by the linear mass density, the mass per unit length, and in fact the speed depends upon the square root of that ratio there. So just to remind you that F is the tension in whatever's got the transverse wave in it, and this mu factor here is the linear mass density, the mass per unit length. So if we could determine those two quantities in this problem, the tension in the spring and the mass per unit length of the spring, then we could determine the speed that the transverse wave is going to be travelling along that spring as it's being plucked. Let's begin by looking for the tension force in the spring. We can think about the tension force in the spring by drawing a free body diagram for the mass, because the mass here must have its weight acting downwards, capital MG, and it will have the tension force from the spring pulling upwards. And in fact, they're the only two forces acting upon that mass. The mass is not moving, so it's therefore not changing how it's moving. So these two forces must add to zero. And we can see they're pointing in opposite directions. So it's fairly clear that we must have the tension force here must be equal to the weight of that mass, which we know is three kilograms. We could actually write that down. That's going to be three times 9.8. And so we end up with a weight there of 29 0.4 newtons. Now when it comes to the mass per unit length, we've got to keep in mind here that although our spring we know has a mass of 0.08 kilograms and an unstretched length of 25 centimetres, at the moment that this wave is travelling along the spring it's not 25 centimetres long. It's as indicated they're being stretched by an amount. So we need to determine how long the spring is to figure out the mass per unit length of the spring. So the length of the spring that we're looking for will of course be the unstretched length plus the amount that it's changed. And if we rearrange Hooke's law from above, we can see that the magnitude of that stretched length is simply going to be the tension in the spring, the force applied to the spring by the weight hanging from it, um, divided by the spring constant there. So here I will have L0 plus F divided by K, and I can write that down a bit more simply by putting it over a common denominator here of the spring constant. That will be k times L0. And instead of writing F here, I can write that I know as the weight of the mass that's being suspended. So there's the length 
of the spring with the mass attached to it. And so now I should be able to calculate the mass per unit length for the spring. It's simply going to be uh, the mass of the spring, which I know is, a, we'll call it lowercase m here, um, divided by uh, this length L here. And that's going to be the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So that will give me mk over k L naught plus big M G. And I can put some numbers into that. I know all my quantities there. Uh, the mass of the spring is 0 0.08 kilograms multiplied by the spring constant 120 newtons per meter divided by that 120 newtons per meter multiplied by the unstretched length which is 25 centimeters or 0.25 meters uh, plus a capital mg which is three times 9.8 which i know is 29.4 and i do that calculation and i'll find my mass per unit length there comes out to be 0 0.162 and it will be in units of mass per length kilograms per meter and so all that's left to do now is to take my tension in the spring and my mass per unit length of the spring and actually calculate the speed of that transverse wave so it's going to be that 29.4 as the tension divided by 0 0.162 as the mass per unit length and take the square root of that and I'll wind up with an answer there of 13.5 and because I've carried my units through in SI units that will be in meters per second. Now one point to consider is that I did make an assumption in this solution here that the spring without the mass attached, just the spring hanging vertically without the mass being there, I assumed that that spring which would be at the original length would have zero tension in it. If that was the case there, then there would be no tension force because there'd be no weight attached. Of course, this spring does indeed have a weight of its own, which would probably slightly stretch the spring, put a slight tension in the spring. Not so straightforward to calculate what that will be because this mass of the spring is distributed all the way along. So really what I've assumed here is that the mass of the spring is significantly less than the mass that's attached to it and therefore any tension in the spring that's arising from the spring's own weight can be ignored.